It's time for another very special edition of the Cat Black Mother Road Local Music Show on KSCN. Cat has Tommy Dukes and Roger Smith in the studio. I'm very excited today and honored to have our uh, Hall of Famer here, Tommy Dukes, uh, Northern Arizona. Um, I am a uh, member of the Blues Alliance, and I'm just proud and tickled pink to be here with Tommy Dukes. Tommy, how are you doing today? Well, I'm hanging in there. Well, uh, we're going to ask you a few questions uh, today. We're going to say hi to Roger. How are you doing, Roger? I'm doing fine, thanks. Uh, we're going to start off, and we're going to ask you, Tommy. When you grew up, Tommy, I know you didn't grow up in Flagstaff, Arizona, but where did you grow up? Let's start there. I, well, I'm from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. But I, my mother sent for me and my brother. When I was 10, he was 15, so he rode in a Greyhound bus from Mississippi to Winslow. My mother had left. You know, she left when I was a little kid. And I didn't find out till later that, later in years, that she, that reason why she left, I heard her talking on the telephone, and she said, the reason why I left Brooke because he wouldn't work. So she left with another man, left me and my brother, back, back in Mississippi, so. And what year was it, back in? Back in the day. Back in the yes, we drove, we got to Winslow in the back of a Greyhound bus. When we, when we first left Mississippi, uh, we went a long ways, and I think they changed bus drivers, and I think the bus driver told the other bus driver that, hey, there's two black kids sitting in the back of that bus. The guy noticed when he got on, got out on the bus, he looked back trying to see if he could see us. He, I think I looked around, he spotted me. He said, hey, you two boys come up here and sit behind me. So oh. we were sitting behind the bus driver. We thought we was in heaven then. He was keeping an eye on you, making sure you guys were okay. And, and, you, and you got out to Flagstaff and... We went to Winslow. That's where, that's where my folks were living at in Winslow. Winslow. My mother and my uh, stepdad. And, and when you got to Winslow, uh, you... We ended up at the La Posada. So we got out. It was nighttime, early in the morning. And we, w- we walked down to the street, and the police car drove up. <laughs> and he said, where are you guys going? Who are you looking for? And he, we told him, Ruby Ruby Williams. So we got in the car and took us over to Ruby Williams. Cause they, and Winslow was so small, everybody knows everybody in Winslow. Because my parents, when we got, them, got there, my parents, they was... Uh, in the woods, he was a logger. So he was cut logs out in the woods for Duke City. So we got to Winslow, you and your brother got to Winslow, and, and your, your, your first memory of Winslow is uh, the La Posada and that night. And then uh, when you were growing up, you went to school, I'm assuming, in Winslow? Yes, I did. Yeah. And did you take any classes, any musical classes? Was no, I it? didn't, I'm a self-taught. See, when we got, first got there, uh, my folks, uh, they had a little bitty house. See this house right here, just, yeah, Tommy has a shirt on. We're gonna we're gonna put that on the website. It's just uh, one room. It was four of us in one room. There's one room and there's a kitchen. I don't know if you want to call that two room. I call it one room. <laughs> one, room. one room shack. And so you you grew up in Winslow. And what was it like growing up in Winslow back then? It was it was okay. So it's just a living, you know, situation there. So after we were there for a while, we moved from there to another house. From another house to a bigger house, and that's where it all happened at. Well, when, I, when I first started uh, trying to play music, well, when I no, first ever know, knew anything about music, uh, Chuck Berry would come on the radio, and my brother and I, my other brother, showed up from Mississippi. He was old, he's the oldest, his name is Robert, Robert Evans. And every time Chuck Berry would come on the radio, man, we was down there, man. We back, back, like, like Johnny Be Good. We was down there like we playing guitar, like we food, food, you know. My mother walked in the door, walk in the room. She said, "Shake her head." She said, "You guys are crazy." Anyway, anyway, we just, that's what we did every time. If if it wasn't uh, Johnny Be Good, it was Nadine or anything by by Chuck Berry. We would get up and pretend like we are playing. We plan. Oh wow! And so you and your so, brothers would pretend to have a yes. band. Yes. And and finally one day, uh, a magazine came in the in the mail, so you can order. There's a lot of things in there you you can order, but uh, you got to sell so many, so many many of it, to, to to get what you want out of that book. So I was going through the book and I saw this ukulele. 
I say, I want that guitar right there. <laughs> but, uh, you so. You have to sell things like green stamps or no. something? <laughs> green stamps no, for your guitar? No, no, no. It was some, I chose the, the, uh, the Lord Prayers. They call them plats. Oh, plats. So I went, instead of me going on South Side where I live at, uh, I went across in North Side where the white folks at. So I knew I'd sell more over there, and I did. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so I sold enough to get that, to, to get the guitar. Oh. Now, and then my mother sent for the guitar. And after I got it, I didn't like it. There's only four strings. What am I going to do with a four? Bing, plong, plong, bing. I said, oh, no, 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 oh, no. I didn't. No, no, I was, oh, I was mad. Oh. I did all that walking in over there, man, you know, and to rake, to get some money to, to, you know what I mean? I didn't like it. So finally, one day, uh, my brother, had, I like, I went uptown. I used to go uptown a lot, you know. And I went home one day and the, my brother had a guitar. I, get said, I said, where'd you get that from? So he bought it from a, a, it was a preacher named Preacher McKine. And he bought the guitar from him. So <clears throat> by my brother working a lot, and I had time to mess with the guitar. See, and, and did he know? I ended up playing the guitar. He didn't. <laughs> so what happened? How I really got into it? But there's some friends of mine that live about uh, four houses down on the same side the street, and they would play Jimmy Reed music uh, all day. They had big albums, some big. I think it was 33. 33 and 30. 33 and 30. Thir something like that. How do you know? I'm, I'm old too, oh, Tommy. Jimmy Reed music, man. They had, a, they had two albums. Uh, one, I think one was You Don't Have to Go. Uh, anyway, he had two, two. I can't remember way back from way back then. but And they played. Man, it's about four ladies down there. Who, who those girls? They're, they're going to be guys, you know. So a lot of men would hang around, there, hang around there. And then this one guy named Lester Sweet. Yeah, he tuned my guitar for me, and I learned how to do some of his stuff, too. Now, who was Lester Sweet? Oh, uh, yeah, he played like... <laughs> Rock me, baby. Rock me all night long. Rock me, baby. I want you to rock me, baby, like my back ain't got no bone. Roll me, baby, like you roll your wagon wheel. Hey, roll me, baby, like you roll your wagon wheel. I want you to roll me, baby. You don't know how it makes me feel. See, he, he would play that song, and I was shamed bashful back in the day. So I went home. So I started listening in my head, that sound. Yeah. And then I started, I started doing what he did. Just by yourself. Yep. Yeah. But, but back to the Jimmy Reed stuff, though. I, uh... I had a box guitar. He had two F holes in it. So I put my harmonica off in this big box guitar. So I put my mouth down there. I was crazy about the song, you, Baby, You Don't Have to Go. I put my mouth down there. I said, Womp, 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 womp. I said, Wow. Then I go, Then I just started playing. This is the first song. Um, Oh, baby, you don't have to go. Oh, baby, you don't have to go. I'm gonna pack up, darling, down the road I go. all my money and you go downtown you come back in the evening telling me you 
leaving town Oh baby You don't have to go I'm gonna back up dog Down the road I go After that man I just went on after that Oh my God, just sitting here in the studio, I have to let you know, just hearing the, the blues sound with Roger's bass here, it's just wonderful. I mean, it's, you can really feel it. I know how it must have moved you to want to play more. Yeah, you know, what? that was the first song that I played, you know, learned to play of Jim Reed music. I was so into it, you know, because those, those uh, young ladies, they play it all day. You can't help but like it. like it, yeah. You can't yeah, you <laughs> help but you do it, you know. And my friend, uh, it was like, it was twins, Jesse, it was it Jesse Vaughn, May and Ray, they were twins, and Annie and Margaret, Ooh. you know, good friends of mine that was down there, lived down there, I got the, had the opportunity to listen to their records and, and learn off of them. You know, another song that was, uh, uh, Honest I Do. Oh, I love On This Side Do. Have you heard On This Side Do? No, I haven't. Why don't you give us a little bit of that, Tommy? I don't have no harmonica. So I learned how to play harmonica too now, so I don't have no harmonica to do that with. Okay. Don't you know that I love you? On this I do. I never plays no one above you. Please tell me you love me Stop driving me mad You the sweetest little woman That I ever had Wonderful! Uh, I was so into Jimmy Reed till every song that he put out, I could do it. And you'd be surprised of the people now that play harmonica. Uh, if I say, let's play a Jimmy Reed, yeah, and A, it's, they get an A harmonica, start blowing it. But it doesn't go like that. You gotta play the notes for notes. And that's what I did. I learned how to play note for note for Jimmy Reed. Every song he came out with, I could do it. I think that's called practice. That's, that's a, that's a rough that's, word. I think that's called listening, too. Listening and practice. It's just like going to school, you know. If you listen to the teacher, you're not gonna learn. You know, yeah. just like guitar, you gotta listen to what you what you playing before you play it. Right. So I wrote, I uh, almost uh, uh, I messed. As a matter of fact, I missed my 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 record up because if time get to a certain thing that I couldn't get, I would stop. I pull I pull the needle up, oh, then so get back to it again. It, then I got ready to play it all the way through. It wouldn't play. It got ready to keep going the same thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh man! <laughs> so I had to pick it up, put it over. But I'm glad. I went one time after I started playing. I played with a lot of guys. I, I uh, had to play this guy named Dolly. He was playing with a friend of mine that I met, and his name was Casey Maddox. He lived up in uh, in Pine Top. Well, Mike McNary. And uh, well, got Dolly. He was a bass player, and he had to. He was going back to Texas, and he needed a bass player. I said, "Man, I don't know how to play no bass." So I ended up playing a bass uh, with KC, and and, were you and good? West Westbrook Westbrook was the drummer. Okay. And we 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 got along well. We tore it up. Yeah. So you just like picked up the bass, picked just up the bass. It, oh man, it was like that a precision. Yeah, right there. That's the bass right there. He's pointing at Roger's bass here, and Roger has a, what kind of bass is that, a Fender? Th this one's a Fender Precision. Fender Precision. That's, what I, that's what I played on, and it was heavy. Yeah, oh yeah. I was like 15, and that was heavy. I missed out playing in bars at 15. In did you have fake IDs? Well, how did how'd you do that? Oh, the man made me leave. You know, we were first gig up there. Uh, we had to, it was bad. Cause I was I was shame. Uh, being fifteen, all those girls looking at me, man, and, and you were nervous. And, yeah, buddy, oh. that was that was a jukebox right there. So I hit behind the jukebox playing that bass, and everybody said, "Come here, come out my hand." I said, "No." Oh. Oh. 
And in on like when the break time, we uh, like this guy named on the place name is Wash Matt, and he said he got to go out, he got to leave. So there was a bar next to where, where the natives, you know, would be, hang out at. So I went uh, next door and I hung out with them till it was time to go back to play. Because you were too nervous. No, because I uh, I was too young to no. be in there. Oh. Yeah, I was too young, so uh, it was like play, leave, play, leave. So you've been playing professionally since you were 15 out in, in different clubs. And did you run into anyone that uh, that you want to mention here? Anybody famous that you played with? That was Joe Houston would come through town. A lot of guys would come through town. Yeah, times somebody would come through town. This guy from the Prayer Moon, that's where he played that lot, the Prayer Moon, too. Uh, he would always call me. Hey, Duke, what are you doing? So, nothing. Come on, man. I got somebody I want you to meet. Back, see, back then, uh, 66 ran through Winslow. Right, right. It was no right. freeway. Right, right, right. It was the one way east and one way west. Right. And I met a lot of folks coming through there. I, I'm sure Winslow now has a, a pretty big festival to commemorate uh, music in Winslow. And, and you might want to talk about that. That's a, a festival that's coming up. Yeah, every every year, uh, the last Friday and Saturday in September, I believe it is, they have a stand on the corner. And the first year they had it, I was booked at Charlie's, so I, so I couldn't I couldn't do it. But I've been doing them ever since, you know. It's a pretty big festival. It is. It's, it's a lot of people come from all over to be there. In fact, I, I probably soon they'll have a statue of you there, man. That would be nice, you know. That would be nice because you know I stood there. I'm. Uh, Arizona Blues legend of Winslow. That's right, you know? and, and I wanted to ask you about that. Tell us a little bit about the Northern Arizona. Well, I was inducted in the Arizona Blues Hall of Fame in 1997. That's what I want to ask yeah? you about. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> a lot of my friends from Winslow showed up down to Tempe for to, to be a part of it. Yeah, when I was inducted, yeah. So. And, and so do they have uh, a certain kind of ceremony that you go through, Tommy? Well, they have a lot of people playing and stuff, you know. The players no. now are getting the notoriety that I, I think they deserve. And and one of the things that I wanted to talk about is, is uh, you know, what goals you have with, with doing your music. Are there any plans that you have, things coming up you want to share with everyone? You know, I've, I've been playing. I just, I've been in a lot of places, you know, and done a lot of things. But when my mother got sick, you know, I, st I was doing good before she got sick. And after she got sick... Uh, it was hard, you know, got to play, run back to Winslow and take care of her. So I decided to stop for a while. I think I stopped for about a year or so, you know, to take care of her. And I thought she was going to get better, but she didn't. She died, you know. And and, and coming back, it's hard. You know, if you're out there doing good and, and you lay off, it's hard to come back sometime, you know. It's hard to get back out there. I, uh, you're preaching to the choir, I understand. But, you know, we, we got it in us. It's just like a love affair when you miss upon your woman, uh, she don't want you back. But you know, it, it's something. Music is in our hearts, and and I, I when I go to see you play, and you know Roger out there playing a lot of the different musicians in town, we do this because we love it, and I'm pretty sure that you feel the same way. You know, uh, when I go out and play, you know, I have met a lot of folks, you know, and when BB came out this song while I sing the blues, I can relate to that song because I've been. Let's play a little bit of it. Let's play a little bit of it. I sing the blues. One, two, three, four. Everybody wants to know why I sing the blues Everybody wants to know Why I sing the blues I've been around a long time Yes, I paid my dues When I first got the blues They brought me over on a ship A woman standing over me With a long black whip Everybody wants to know Why I sing the blues Yes, I've been around a long time. Yes, I paid my dues. I 
I play and get old flat. Cold and numb, heard the rat chill of bed bugs. If the roast is some, everybody wanna know why I sing the blues. Yes, I've been around a long time. Yes, I paid my dues. See, I can relate to all that stuff, you know? That's well, you know, when I was, what? When I, was, when I, I used to come up here and play from Winslow, like in the wintertime. Uh, sometime when we get done playing, we used to have, it was an Elks Club over on Accuracy back in the day. And after after we played one night, this guy said, uh, hey, man, uh, how about give me, give me a ride to Brandon home? Uh, me, and the, me and the drummer was together. We lived in Winslow. We said, okay, man. He got in the car, so we took off. It had snow, the snow there. So we went down the hill, tried to get up the other hill. The wheel was spinning. We couldn't go, so the guy said, uh, I just get out, man. Uh, he, he got out and walked home, so now we got to turn around Stop. and go back. And up the other hill, we couldn't get up the other hill. And then after one o'clock, so what do we do? We had to pull over to the side. We went to sleep. <laughs> that was the blues. You know, I played in a lot of places, man. And, yeah. One time I went to Oakland again, and uh, I went to this club, and a small place, and it's a black place, but it was a mixed crowd there. And it was a three-piece band, and they was playing, and they let me sit in. I played. And the guy, he didn't want to come back and play. He, he, he said, oh, go ahead, go ahead and play some more. And I came back to Flagstaff. Another time, I went again. Yeah, me and my girlfriend went again, and my brother lived out there too, half brother. And we went to the same club. The same guy was playing, and they didn't see me. They was playing, so we got a, a chair, a, a, a seat right there by where they was at. But he he was looking off a different, another different direction. We sat down there, and. Uh, they taking the orders, to, uh, what they wanted to drink. He looked and saw me. He came out of that gear talk about, here, <laughs> here, no, come, come on, here. come on. No, he, he came out of that gear to let me play as long as I wanted to. He didn't recognize who I was, you know. He knew me just like that. You know, uh, another time, I think during that same time, we went to the Fisherman Wharf, something like that, in San Francisco, and uh, we watched watching the fish and, and stuff in the water. So we decided to walk down the sidewalk, we heard some music. Somebody playing some blues from that place. Anyway, walk up there. It was packed, jam packed. I had a cap on, like this here, said Tommy Deuce Blues Band. So, say black guy, three black guys was playing. And uh, this lady say, you play music? Uh, I said some, some stuff. I said something crazy. She said, what you doing that cap on if you don't play? So the band gave me to take a break by then. So she asked the guy, if I could, hey, can this guy, oh, let this guy play. He said, what do you play? You play guitar. That fool got on the microphone, and he said, we got somebody in here who wants to, wants to play the guitar. If you can't play, I put a plug on him. I've done it once, and I'll do it again. Nervy. I said, wow, this man calling me out. <laughs> so I Stand up or shut up. So I got on the stage, and uh, I put the guitar on. So I asked the crowd, I said, I say, is there anybody in here is anybody in here uh, heard of Albert King? A few people say, yeah. I know I get him on the next one. What about Steve Ray Vaughn? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Then I, then, I, then I start playing. The sky is crying. Look at the tear rolling down the street. Guys crying. Let the tear rolling down the street. I've been looking for my baby, and I wonder where can she be. While I was playing, the people, man, they run up there throwing money on the stage. Well, the, 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 those guys, they, their picture was already 
with money filled up already. So I was saying to myself, I wanted that for me. I wanted that for me. So uh, I get off stage. Uh, the lady said, pick up your money. I said, no, I don't know about that. And a few minutes later, she went, to, she went to reach for it. And the black guy said, yeah, man, that's your money, man. He didn't like it, though. <laughs> you know how much it was? Nope. $49. Wow. If I had known it, I'd still be playing right now. For one song. <laughs> $49 a song. Well, let me tell you now. When I was living in Phoenix, uh, I had a friend from here that was living down there. And she said, B.B. King's uh, coming into town. Uh, I forgot what day she said it was. She said, you want to go? I said, no. What, what, so my why did time, you say no? Because I, I worked nights and I, oh. I didn't, I didn't want to go. Anyway, he got down to the last. And so I went. It was at Dooley's. I went to see him. Oh man, what a! I'm glad I did go, you know. So what? What got me was a. Uh, Play live. I never first time ever seen somebody play live like that. And I, I, so I went home and got my guitar. I started doing the same thing. And I know, I used to, I, I've seen BB a few times. And one time, me and a friend of mine, Ed Canapa, I don't know if you know Ed Canapa, he's played bass with me. We went down to see him one time at the Celebrity. The last thing with the stage, we went around, he was coming back around, he got right in front of us. His amp blew up in flames. It just burst out in flames. That's when he said, he said, I don't know why. I'm having all this problem. This is my last gig before I go to Mississippi to bury my mother. But they, they brought him another amp and he finished the show. But my first time meeting him was at a place called the Grand Central Station. I think it was on Thomas, I believe it was. This guy was my manager at the time. At the time, his name was Clark. And he knew the bass player. This black guy used to thump the bass a lot. He knew him and uh, they, they did the first show. So I went to meet. B.B. King and back back there, he had a little mobile home looking thing, you know, when you get on, <laughs> when you get on the side, step up on the side, he was sitting there. I said, B.B., I, I shook his hand, I said, uh, it's nice to meet you, man. And I said, I play a little bit like you. <laughs> you know what he told me? <laughs> B.B. said, be yourself. Before we, we started this interview, you were telling me uh, a, a story about B.B. King, what happened uh, when he died. Would you want to share that with everyone? Oh, sure. Uh, I didn't know that he had died, so I was asleep. I, I woke up like 12, some, one, somewhere around there, and I, was, I didn't want to get out of the bed. That's one thing. You know, when you're sleeping, you don't want to get out of bed. You ain't got nothing to get out of the bed for, you know? I got out, got out of bed, went, to the, went into the kitchen. And, and, and it was a song. You're gonna miss me. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. Yes, you're gonna miss me. You're gonna miss me. When I'm gone You won't stop doing those bad habit things, baby So I got to pack up And go back to my own home I don't want to play too much Because you might make a million off of it That's right, I'm going to sell it <laughs> Well, let me tell you uh, this part here I was playing at Charlie's one time, and uh, these two, this black guy and white guy walks in, and I took a break. 
And he said, come here. So we go out into the lobby. He said, if I hadn't just got off the phone with Mr. King, I would have swore that was him in that plan. Talking about BB. You don't call him BB, they call him Mr. King. Mr. King. And what happened? So him he said, him and the white guy walked down the street and the white guy said, We're going in there. Maloney's next door. He said, he told the black guy, We're going in there. So the black guy stopped him. He said, Wait a minute. He said he went like this, put his hands up to his ear, he turned his head towards Charlie. He said, You can go in there, <laughs> but I'm going in here. <laughs> You drew, you're drawing crowds there, Tommy. Uh, that's good, yeah. And you know, we're, we're really happy to have you uh, here in our music community in Flagstaff. We're happy to have your, for you to bring us your music today. We're going to definitely upload it to the KSZN library. And if anyone wants to buy your music or find your music, Tommy, where can we go to find you? Where I'm playing it. Well, I'm, uh, I appreciate you having me here today, you know, for this here venue. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Tommy. It's our honor to have you here at the radio station, and thank you so much, Roger Smith, for coming. You know we love the support of, of a solid bass player, and you are one of the main bla- bass players in town, and we appreciate you both being here today. And thank you for being here with the Mother Road Music Show, and I'm Cap Black, your host, and we will uh, see you next time. Mm-hmm.